Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Today, John Coleman and I have the pleasure once again to speak with Bill Jordan, the boom philosopher. <laughs> Bill, good to see you again. Good to be seen, guys. Good to see uh, you guys. I hope you're doing well. We, we are. I, I want to raise this topic. Uh, this is important to everybody uh, over 50, actually, everybody in general. But certainly when you get older and, and you're looking at retirement or when you're in retirement, money becomes like really important topic. You know, do you have enough of it? How do you keep it? How do you not lose it? Where do you put it? What do you, how do you manage it? And how do you fight off those relatives that want it? <laughs> but it, it it seems to me that um, you know money. We were talking about books last time. Money is kind of like books in the sense that there's a process of learning um, about money and what to do with it, and how to manage it. Blah blah blah. Some people never learn. Right. But I I guess it, it's. Well, let me ask you this: What do you know now oh. about money? Right that you wish you had known back then, whenever back then was. Well, something, yeah, well, something that was told me by my first uh, boss, owner of the first radio station I worked at, and it was probably 1973, 1974, I wanted to buy a little, I mean little, color television. Yep, that's what they were. Little, little bitty color television. And, you know, who knows what it costs. I was making 85 bucks a week or 100 bucks a week at the time. Anyway, I applied for the credit to buy it, and I was turned down because I didn't have any credit. And maybe I wasn't making enough money or earning enough money at the time. And I remember talking to, my, to, the, to the boss about that, to the owner of the station. And he, I remember him telling me this. And, again, even making 85 bucks or 100 bucks a week, he said, you know, if you put away $5 a week, and don't touch it. In 20 years, you'll have X amount of money. Now, when you're a kid, when you're you know, you know, 18, 19 years old, like I was, that seems incomprehensible, or you don't think in terms of 20 years down the road. But 20 years down the road, God willing, will arrive. The time value of money is amazing. So yeah. I tell young people now, as soon as you get a job, find a good money person, guy or you know, man or woman, I don't care. Find a good one and have them start squirreling that away for you and forget about it. And there was a, you guys may remember this book from back in, I think in the 70s, there were two books, Winning Through Intimidation. And then the second one was Looking Out for Number One. The author was Robert Ringer. I read both of those books. And I remember in Looking Out for Number One, it was, you need to have two stacks of money, the, sa the mo of s money to save. The stack you're saving and then you can touch and a stack you never touch. Yeah. The compound interest of money, the compound value of, the, of time and money yeah. is the biggest secret going. It just absolutely is. And the, and the you know, I wish I had, I've never found the definitive answer because I'm not a math whiz at all. One of you guys may be, but there's a famous example of if you take a checkerboard or a chessboard, there's 64 squares on it. And if you put a penny on the first square and then the second square, it's two pennies and then four and then eight cents and then 16 cents. And you ask somebody, would you rather have $10 million or will the amount in the last square of the 64th square, starting with a penny and doubling it for 64 times? Most people will say $10 million and you are far shortchanging yourself. It's an astronomical amount of money because of the compound interest of that. That's the biggest lesson that I wish I had learned. And also along the way in working, I would talk to somebody playing a golf tournament or something. And some guy would be a financial advisor before I eventually got one of my own. And I'd say, what's the biggest tip? He says, are you maximizing your employee withholding at work? If they offer that like 401k matching or whatever it is, are you maximizing that? And I'm saying, no, he says, well, that's before you buy stock or anything, you need to do that. And I didn't do that. Just didn't yeah. do it. Yeah. So, we're, you know, we get caught up in uh, buying stuff and acquiring stuff. And then we get caught up in actually redundancy of buying stuff. 
you know, how many hats do you need? We've talked about this. You know, how many hats do you need? How many of this do you need? How many? Of oh, whatever. Wait, 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 wait. You're in dangerous territory here because you I shouldn't know. be you shouldn't be talking about this because between hats and shorts. Although well, we do admit, we do admit that we know that you keep them forever. So you do correct. You get yeah. a lot of use out. So well, I'd like to keep adding to them. You know, I'd like, I'd so, like to yeah. jump in here and say, uh, uh, Bill, I think that you probably have actually hit on. Uh, uh, for most people, uh, what if I knew then what I know now, which is of all the useless things, all of the color televisions and the uh, extra baseball hats and the tens of thousands of dollars we spent on crap uh, yeah. uh, along the way, uh, not artworks uh, that might increase in value. But I think the biggest thing that uh, certainly that I learned and thankfully you know, we, we've done okay uh, because I uh, you know, had a couple of really, really, really good earning years. But along the way, uh, there's no question that if you take 10% and just make believe you never earned it, if you are, and by the way, you, you talked about 85 yep. bucks a week. I remember my first job was really, I made a lot of money. I was getting paid $5,200 a year. Wow. And that was more than teachers were paid in those days. Uh, and that was a, as a, a programmer for yeah. uh, a yeah. small uh, computer company, but uh, but back in the day, there's no question that while we didn't have a whole lot of money and we were supporting a household and my wife was finishing up school and getting a teaching credential, that uh, there's no question that I could have just made believe that I made ten percent less and put it away, and uh, at this point in time, I'd have. You know what's in the sixty fourth square sure. of sure. Uh, that chessboard? Yeah, sure. What about you, John? And I, I also think early on, if I may interject, early sure. on uh, we don't understand what happens regarding credit card interest. Oh yeah. Oh boy. To avoid that at all costs. You know, you go into a new, yeah. new store. Hey, we'll save you fifteen percent today if you want to sign up for a credit card. No thanks. Yeah. No thanks. Stay away from it. And, and I've got a friend who's. Very, very wise. And I asked him one time, how'd you get to be so smart? He said, I read a lot of nonfiction. And he <laughs> reads a lot of money stuff. And, and he's, a, he's quite the investor on his own. And he said, as we retire, it's not how much we have saved. It's how much we owe. And I have found yeah. that to be the case. It's like, man, yeah. okay, so I'm this in this semi-retired, mostly retired state, but I'm still paying off debt that I should have never had. Sure. Yeah, and that's why I think um, having paid off your mortgage uh, by the time you retire is so valuable. Is because a mortgage is debt. We don't think of it that way. We think of it as rent. You know. Right. Right. Um, but Art, your your um, example of uh, great i great concepts for for money. Um, I learned at a much later age. Um, well, I I knew about it. But I didn't know the value of it until a neighbor uh, gave it a name for me. And it's called Pay Yourself First. Yes. And the idea of, of just pretending you know, that you didn't, didn't even make that 10%, that's, that's important. And you, sometimes you have to fool yourself in order to save money. You just have to say, well, that doesn't exist. Well, you know, I was fortunate enough to work for a company in the last 23 and a half years of my radio career that uh, you could take from your paycheck an employee withholding. Mm -hmm. So you set that up and you make it automatic and you don't see it on your paycheck. It's not like you're getting paid and then you're trying to then move money into a savings. Sure. It's just moved to savings and you don't even think about it. It becomes yep. automatic and you forget about it. And one day you will be amazed. And the other yep. line with that is, Safe for a rainy day because believe me, it's gonna rain. Oh man, I've had a lot of rain clouds in my life. It's gonna rain. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, great, great. This this is great advice for the people who are not in our audience. All those people. <laughs> well, I mean, it's something 50. for our audience. It's something to make sure you tell your kids and grandkids about. I mean, and this is important stuff. I mean, you know, it's it's much easier to go through life learning from somebody else's experience than than making our own mistakes. Yeah, right. we all make mistakes, but if you can learn the value of of somebody else's experience, then by all means take it. I mean, why yeah. would you not? And what better what better advice can you give that if you don't want to be in a position that 
like when we go, there's nothing to leave you guys because we didn't save enough when we were younger. Okay. Right. So, so you're stuck now. If you don't want your grandkids to be stuck, you don't want yourself to be stuck. Pay, like uh, John said, pay yourself first. Anyway, yeah, I yeah. think that uh, uh, this still goes for all of us now on what we spend money on. And yes, uh, we should enjoy life as well. But uh, sure. we don't have to sure. buy unnecessary crap. And we can still put away for a rainy day because uh, we're living longer, healthier uh, lives. And uh, we're able to get around. And we're going to want some more money. So we don't want to run. We want to run out of money well after we're gone. That's uh, but not, not sure. that far after we're gone. But uh, it pays to be uh, saving and putting away for that rainy day as well. So anyway. That's it. Just uh, be smart. Thank, thank you for getting us started on this bill. As always, great advice from you and uh, very thought provoking. Guys. Thank you. Here's, thank you. Here's to uh, everybody managing their money well and enjoying life. There you go. Live your life, forget your age, and embrace the boom. Thanks for having me back, guys. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.